you need to get better. Don't be bitter, get better. Don't be frustrated, get fascinated. And before I get into these five factors, these five major keys that helped us create a full-time income, I didn't have a whole lot of credibility. I didn't have a whole lot of confidence. I didn't have a vast network like I do today. So we all start at suck. You're going to have to embrace the suck. You're going to suck at some of the things you do that are worth getting good at. If you're awesome at videos right out of the gate or you're awesome at closing, it's probably because you had an experience somewhere else that helped you get good at those skills, but it's very rare that someone is an awesome prospector, an awesome marketer, an amazing closer right out of the gate. Write this down. I heard this from Eric Worre one time. You will be punished or rewarded based on the life you led prior to getting involved in your home business. So what does that mean? You'll be punished or rewarded. That means those of you that have credibility, you have influence, maybe you've done something like this before, you have a natural gift when it comes to communication, marketing, creativity, uh, networking, you're a people person. Some people will be naturally gifted at one facet of the business or another, but you wanna master these five factors that I'm gonna share with you, but the foundation to building a profitable business. Listen, I want you to write this down. Fortune favors the bold, because I want you to look back on your life and I want you to think about this. I want you to write these things down because I'm trying to help you build your confidence, build your belief in yourself because you ain't going nowhere if you're super scared and you're not courageous and you're not taking action because of the fear of failure or the fear of judgment, what other people are thinking about you. Which by the way, everybody's too worried about themselves to be thinking about you anyway. And who cares? Listen, at the end of the day, stop caring about what other people think about you because they don't pay your bills. Their opinions don't pay your bills. Write that down. But imagine what your life would look like. Now forget the excuses, forget all the reasons why you struggle and all this excuse-itis, Ugh, let's not talk about that. Stop focusing on the negative and giving life to the negativity. Let's focus on abundance. Let's uh, focus on prosperity, gratitude, right? What are you grateful for? What do you love about you? Write that down. What do you love about your business? Let's focus on that because what would your life look like if you were 10 times bolder? If you reached out to that chicken list, if you didn't care what people thought about you, if you did those videos that you know you should be doing, if you promoted your products, if you promoted your opportunity, you, you started talking to people about the business more often. Don't you think if you were 10 times bolder and you got over your fear of failure, you could accomplish so many things? And I want you to look at your life in reverse. How many things did you do that were scary, but you did it anyway, and you accomplish something because of it. Maybe you got married. That's a bold decision to ask someone to marry you. It's a bold decision to have kids. It's a bold decision to go to college, get a degree. It's a bold decision to go in for that job interview. When you look at your life in reverse and you're like, wow, that one bold decision, look at the domino effect, the butterfly effect. Look what that helped me create because of one bold decision. And, and honestly, these are decisions that you can make small decisions every single day. Like it takes courage to eat healthy and work out, go to the gym when you don't really like the way you look in the mirror. That takes courage. You got to be bold to do that. So when you look at your life in reverse, how many amazing things have happened since you made some bold decisions? And I say that to say this, those limiting beliefs are holding you back from so many freaking opportunities. So I want you to write down, what are you grateful for? What do you love about yourself? What do you love about your business? And I want you to be 10 times bolder. Like what would the boldest version of you start to do more of? How would you show up every day? How would you be more disciplined, more consistent? How can you like, you know, do things in a way that have that 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 is helping you have more posture? Like when you reach out to people, do you have on a scale of one to 10, do you have a 10 in your confidence? Or are you somewhere in like the, the three, four, five range? Or maybe some of you even are in a, you know, a range of like one or two. Like this is something you need to work on. Whatever you lack, you attack. Don't feel sorry for yourself and go, oh, woe is me. You know, I feel sorry for myself. Because here's the deal. Think about the things you are confident in doing. You know, think of the things that like when you do it, you feel confident. How did you build up that confidence? How did you build up that belief? 
by putting in the effort, by consistently doing that thing, whatever that thing is. Maybe it's a sport. Maybe you're really good at a certain sport. Maybe you're really good at working out. Maybe you're really good. Maybe you're a great singer. Whatever it is, like there's something you're really good at, but maybe you didn't start out that way, right? Like there's a lot of musicians out there. They have stage fright. So they're like this incredible, amazing musician, but it's not that they're not good at singing. It's that they can't get over their fear of failure, their fear of embarrassment, their fear of judgment. And this is the same thing that happens to people in business. And it's amazing how you are your own worst enemy. Like if people said the things about you that you say about yourself, would you get along with that person? Would you be friendly with that person? Would you be nice? Up? Like the way some, and I, listen, I'm only speaking from experience because I did this. I used to say, oh, I, I hate my teeth or, you know, I hate the way I sound or I hate how skinny I am. These are things I would say about myself, personal things. Now I did something about all of the above. You know what I'm saying? Like I did something about my, my smile. I did something about being too skinny. Like I got educated. I learned, I studied, I was frustrated because other people were growing there. Look, it took me seven years, write this down, seven years to fire my boss and create a full-time income in network marketing. And it took me 16 years to become a millionaire. Do you think within that 16 year period, I thought about quitting? Do you think I got comparitis sometimes? Absolutely. All right, let me get into these five factors. You need to master these five things if you want to 10X your business. You want to create a full-time income. Number one, prospecting. You have got to be prospecting every single day. This is hands down the most important. You can't sit back twiddling your thumbs waiting for people to ask you about your product or opportunity. If you're not reaching out to people every single day proactively, and it's amazing how a conversation can lead to a million things. One conversation can lead to a new recruit, a new team that you're launching, a new customer, a, a new referral partner. Maybe they're just referring you to people. And you know what? Maybe it leads to nothing now, but who knows what that could turn into down the road. You always want to nurture relationships. Forget network marketing. Replace the word network with relationship. It's relationship marketing. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. Period. End of story. Okay, the second thing you need to master, you need to master marketing. Now, marketing is tough, right? Because there's a lot of competition these days. But how can you show up authentically? How can you show up in a way that's fun, that shows your personality, where you can provide value? Write down these three E's. You ready? I talk about this all the freaking time. I learned this 10 years ago. And it's just what it is. When you're creating content, you want to create content that is entertaining or educational or empowering. Or you could say inspiring. But I say empowering because three E's. You know what I'm saying? It's easy. Try to create content that is relatable and better yet, shareable content. Literally why I love live videos, because I can do one live video and turn this into multiple pieces of content, you know, post it everywhere. Plus people really get to know you and trust you through your live video content. But of course, this is on top of reels and, you know, static posts and, you know, are you a great storyteller? Are you, you know, inspiring? Do you have great energy? Like, what are you learning when people, this again goes back to stinking thinking. When people start thinking about marketing, they totally overthink it so much. Like when you're wanting to build your brand, your brand is just your online reputation. That's it. It's your online reputation. Okay. So you got to master prospecting. You got to get over your fear of marketing, branding yourself. It's so critical. Number three, you must have a simple system for exposure. Now, obviously you guys know, I love ATM. We created the ATM Business Academy. We've been using the ad tag message formula for years now. We've got private groups to acquire customers, private groups to recruit for business purposes. So this is what I love. I love the fact that we have simple systems in place. So when someone expresses interest in our business, we add them to the business group. They express interest in the product, we add them to the product group. We simply add them to the group, we tag them in the information, we send them a message. Hey Stan, I added you to this group. Let me know once you accept the invite so I can tag in some information. You wanna keep it so, so freaking simple. The problem with so many organizations is they overcomplicate the heck out of every, their system is so complicated. They have, you know, all these boards and all these scripts and all these guides and all these things. And listen, we have those things too, but we've simplified it because you need to make sure you have something that the average person, the part-time person, the busy person can plug into because people get easily overwhelmed. We've all heard the saying, confused people do nothing. If they're confused or overwhelmed, they're not going to do a whole lot. The other thing that's so important, number four, is you must become a lean closing machine. A lean, mean closing machine. If you're not following up, because the fortune's in the follow-up. If you're, oh, I'm so disorganized. I'm not that good at follow-up. Like, 
okay, whatever you lack, you attack. If you're not an organized person, okay, you know, it's tough because like I get it, but I take my follow-up book everywhere I go. It's literally a one-page document and I just take it everywhere I go and it has all the names of the people I'm ATMing. That's it. I mean, I wish I could say I had something more complicated, but I just know I've been using it for 20 years and I just know the sooner I fill up that page with prospects, the sooner I'm signing up new teams, starting new teams, signing up new customers. It's exposure. It's a numbers game. You don't want to treat people like a number, but it is a numbers game. You don't want to have commission breath, but it is a numbers game. If you add 10 people into your ATM group, you're not going to sign up 20. You can't add two and sign up 10. It's just a numbers game. It's common sense. So a lot of you struggle because again, you get this analysis paralysis, you overthink things, you don't create content, or you're not connecting with people in the back end, you're not prospecting, or you're not following up. It's about improvement because the truth is, when I was new to network marketing, my close ratio was terrible, it was in the gutter. Now it's a lot higher, but that's because we've been doing this for 20 years, we have a lot more influence and credibility, and I don't need to prospect people. People come to me. And this is why I told you, you want to get good at marketing. So eventually you can attract people. And when you attract people, your close ratio will absolutely be higher. But if it's cold market, it's going to be lower. If you're new, it's going to be lower. But you just have to be honest with yourself. You could be better. You could do better. You could do more. You could talk to more people. You could talk to your chicken list. You could do more videos. You could get a little more organized with your follow-ups. You could ask better closing questions. Number five, you must get really good at launching new teams effectively onboarding new people. If you can't help new people rank advance and you can't help new people create a success story, it doesn't matter how many people you recruit, doesn't matter how many people you bring on board. Look, I'm not excited to sign up 10 people as much as I am to help one of the people on my team sign up 10 people. Does that make sense? Now, of course, preferably you're doing both. You want to 10X your income? You want to 10X your bank account? You want to 10X your results? You got to be 10 times bolder. What would the boldest version of you do every single day? If you weren't scared, if you were fearless, how would you show up every day? But all of this doesn't matter if you don't master what's in between your ears. Be obsessed or be average. I mean, that's it. What else can I say? Because while you're playing small and you're focused on woe is me, the economy, I'm not good at this, I don't know that many people, there is someone with less talent, less potential, less skills, less life experience than you, and they are out earning you because they just don't care as much as you do about failure.